Yes, played his first five NFL seasons for the Colts and Bills. And for his sixth, he's joining the Cleveland Browns. Triple threat out the backfield. A runner, a receiver, a return guy, and the national spokesman for the Muscular Dystrophy Association, Naeem Hines. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm well. Thank you for having me on. Where are you? Uh, Los Angeles. Oh, you couldn't come in studio <laughs> to hang out with your girl, huh? I guess I could have. I guess I've been in hiding the last few months, but we can still wow. work something out. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> what are you doing in L.A.? I've been doing my uh, ACL rehab out here. So I've been out here for like most of the surgery. Do you like L.A.? I love it. It's a little bit expensive, but the weather is uh, something that you can trade for. Yeah, I'm not, that's, that's fair. It's been raining a little bit, but I'm glad you're out here. That's amazing. Um, okay, you mentioned, your, you mentioned your rehab. You're always honest with me. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling a lot better than I did even a month ago. There's been progress. Uh, I don't wish an ACL surgery on anybody. It's tough uh, the first two or three months, but you start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel in month four, five, six, and seven. So uh, three months ago, I didn't think I was walking well or running well, and now I'm doing both those things. So I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the people I work with and thankful for my recovery process so far. I love that. Um, okay, so let's talk about the Cleveland Browns. You're coming off a knee injury. You just said you're feeling great. Um, the amount of work it takes, not even just physically, we were just talking about Kirk Cousins. I mean, he's going through that at his age. But it's something that's gotten a little, not easier, but there's great medicine. You're going to be brand new and amazing, even though it was, of course, challenging. Um, what was the time away from the field like for you? Uh, it was honestly very hard. It was hard to watch Buffalo last year, uh, especially when they played the Chiefs in the playoffs, just to knowing that's what I came there for to try to help them get over the hump. That was tough to miss. And then honestly, just mentally, it was uh, my first year not playing, really. I've missed five games in my entire life all the way to this point now until this season. So uh, not really used to being on the sideline, not really used to being hurt, but I made the most of my time, made the most of uh, the opportunities I was given, and I made the most of uh, what I could do with the situation. It was unique in the sense that it sort of occurred off the field in the off season. You were with the Buffalo Bills at that time. How do you feel sort of looking back? You know, you're in L.A. There's a lot to look forward to. You're on a new team. You're, which, by the way, you're in your sixth year. That's absolutely crazy to me. I can't even, like, do the math that it's already your sixth year in the NFL. But when, in a you, while. Yeah, when you think about it now, how do you feel about how the Bills handled your uh, situation? Uh, it's business. Uh, both sides could have been better and worse, but uh, there's no hard feelings. Uh, it's how things uh, work out. I mean, they have a cap space issue. Uh, they had to figure things out, and uh, I, I, they moved on. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, that's how the business goes. No hard feelings towards them. They have none towards me, and uh, it's still a family-oriented thing at the end of the day. So uh, not really mad about it. Things happen, and uh, when one door closes, the Lord opens another door. So uh, mm. I guess this is how it's supposed to happen. What did you learn from that whole you know, everyone, you, both sides could have handled things differently. What did you learn? Well, I think personally, it's not even really both sides, it's me. I could be better at not putting myself in that situation. Uh, it was a freak accident, but uh, I've learned my lessons uh, from that mistake. I won't put myself in a position to even miss the season off the field. And based off that, I mean, I could say whatever I want to about the Bills, but it's really on me. I shouldn't have to put myself in that situation. Well, now you, the Lord opened the door to you and Chubb. Okay, you were in a running back room with him. I'm serious. Did you have a connection with him, or did you reach out to his cousin slash your former Wolfpack, by the way, go Wolfpack yesterday, uh, your former teammate Bradley Chubb, to get any inside uh, info well, on Cleveland? What do you got? Well, uh, I knew I knew Chubb some because of Bradley Chubb, so, uh, even, and we came out uh, the same year in 2018, so uh, I got to know him, got to know him really well. Uh, some of the running backs, uh, Todd Gurley, Keith Marshall, he played with at Georgia, so we have a lot of... Uh, overlapping and overlapping connections to know each other. So uh, I've seen him already. We've done some rehab together, so it's great. And uh, I'm excited for what he brings. I'm excited for Jerome Ford and all the other backs. I'm excited to go in and try to compliment those guys. What? How are you going to compliment those guys? And what can you tell me about your excitement about Deuce Daly? <laughs> I'm excited about Deuce. Deuce actually <laughs> did my pro day when I was coming out. So I yeah. was all excited. I was hoping that he would uh, become my coach one day. He's a former player. I watched him play. So that's always great when you have that in a coach. And then uh, as far as complimenting the Browns, uh, you know, Jerome and Chubb, they're over 200 pounds, they're bruisers of runners. Uh, I can get my nose dirty do too, but uh, I'm looking to compliment them in the passing game. Uh, I can run the ball well, but we all know I'm known for my receiving ability, so I'll make sure I can go out there on third down, pick up the blitz when they're not in, make sure I go out there and show mm -hmm. my hands and make sure I make a big splash in the return game. Uh, I've been hearing the whole return specialist thing. I'm not bad, I believe. I play offense, but uh, return returning is something I love to do as well, but I like to do both.
you know, you're with Nick Chubb. You guys clearly know each other. You're going to compliment each other. Scary injury for him last year. What, how is he feeling? Uh, he's feeling good. Uh, I mean, he's had an injury like that before. So if anybody's coming back from it, first off, it's him. He's been working his butt off and he's doing well. And he's one of the hardest workers I've seen and known over the my years in the NFL. So uh, if somebody's coming back from it, I believe it's Chubb. I cannot wait for him to come back. I'm super excited and grateful for uh, Cleveland taking a chance on me and giving me the opportunity to be a Brown. The quarterback room added another quarterback. One of the more fascinating personalities in the NFL, Jameis Winston. Uh, any interactions with him yet? Oh, yeah, we got famous famous. I was super excited. I don't think I've ever been uh, more excited to have a teammate. Uh, he actually this is, reached out this to This is me. your quarterback. I love it. I've been a fan of him since he was at uh, Florida State. Uh, my uncle loves him. When he used to score touchdowns, we screamed famous Jameis. And uh, he reached out to me about a week ago, so I got to connect with him some. I'm excited just to meet with what him. What did he uh, say? No, rehab. give me that. What did he say to you? <laughs> Tell me right now. He just, he just told me uh, he's been following me since I was at NC State. Um, he's super excited to have me, and uh, I could be a key to helping us win some big games. And it's really like that. And like him the same way, uh, if he's on or off the field, his leadership will help us win games and it, his play as well if it comes to that. So uh, I think we're both excited to be added to the Browns. We're both going to try to add our own little spill, spin to the team and hopefully be positive additions to this locker room. I can't wait to see what happens here. You're with the Bills. You've been there a long time. You had a, a great time there. That is a team with Super Bowl hopes, contention, all of that. They lose, they fall short. When you look at that team, what is missing? What do they need? Uh, the Bills, uh... I don't think they really need anything. At least just look, even since 2020, I was on the team then, but it's just, we, they just have to win the uh, moments. Just in the moments, you got to show up. You have to make the field goal, do certain things to just not put yourself in certain positions. I think in uh, most teams in the playoffs, they're one play away or two plays away, and that's just how it's been for Buffalo. And it seems like, hmm. unless you're Kansas City, a lot of those breaks haven't been going people's way since Patrick Mahomes has gotten the league. So uh, I feel like everybody in the AFC is trying to... Uh, emulate what the Chiefs have had, uh, and we know they're the team to beat. So basically, Mahomes has to retire. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Mahomes has to retire or, like, rather pull a Joe Burrow and beat him. That's hey. like the, him and Brady are the only people who beat him in the playoffs. So uh, hopefully Deshaun and the Browns can add on to that. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for another chapter in your story. You're amazing. I love the shirt you're wearing. Go NC State. I don't even care about the tourney, but I'll root for them because of you. <laughs> Thank you, and go back. Uh, please hit me up that you're in L.A. Rude. Rude. Don't you, <laughs> know, I buy, don't I you know I buy dinner and drinks? I'm the, best, I'm the best friend you have. I'm like your big sister. 